Adam, thank you for meeting us uh, today in your lovely house in Tallinn, Estonia, on a Saturday thank afternoon. Thank you for coming. This isn't actually my house, I should point out, but uh, yes. uh, this is a, <laughs> the, a truck. In the backyard, <laughs> and uh, the sauna, the movable sauna, how, uh -huh. what's, what's the name for this? So this is a uh, ZIL-131 sauna. So the ZIL-131 was, uh, this used to belong to the Soviet army, and then the Estonian army took over, and now it's been given a new lease of life uh, as a sauna, a new purpose. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, happy, uh, happy for you. And um, right off the bat, we're going to talk about interesting topics today. Mm -hmm. Why is it so important uh, these days more than ever to own an online company? An online company. You know what? I, I think, first of all, we need to clarify about like what is an online company because actually when we talk about online companies, we're talking about companies that you can set up online, you can manage online, you can do the accounting online, you can do the banking online, you can do all of the kind of hassle much easier online. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the product or service has to be online too. Um, so actually, you know, any company could benefit from being an online company, even if you are kind of a physical um, bricks and mortar offline business. Um, it, you know, there's just some things for every business that's easier to do online. Uh, but certainly, you know, the internet gives us more opportunities than ever before to reach new markets, uh, to, to sell products and services globally. So uh, the opportunities are out there. Um, there's, there's no borders online. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. And Specifically in these in these times, uh, it's very key and essential to dematerialize, de dematerialize the, the business mm -hmm. the way it used to be and put it online so that we can prepare for what's next and thrive in this new era. Um, what's the easiest way to create a company or remain an operating business within the European Union? Yeah, in your in your experience. Uh, so, in my experience and my very biased opinion, um, I'm going to say Estonia. But actually, like to be honest, there's when you're starting a company these days. Like in the past, you used to always just start your company in the country in which you live, and that's kind of the obvious thing to do. You would never think about setting up a, a company in another country unless maybe you're trying to do something very strange um, uh, with taxes or I don't know, trying to hide something. Like whereas these days, actually, it's very easy to set up a, a company in a different country because you know the whole market is open to you. And why would you want to do that? Um, well, because you know some countries offer better kind of administrative environments than others. Um, Estonia is an EU country. We have a very low bureaucracy. We have a totally online business environment. Um, you know, cost of things like accounting is very good value for money. It can all be done online. You can use your digital ID card. Um, I don't think it's for everybody. I'm, I'm sure there's some people who wouldn't benefit from e-residency in an Estonian company. And the goal actually is to make sure that everyone just has as much information as possible about the pros and cons of different options and see which one uh, works best for you. I mean, certainly Estonia benefits kind of especially kind of um, freelancers, very small companies, like very early stage startups actually do really well in Estonia. Um, and yeah, so it's just making sure that everyone has as much information as possible about what are the pros and cons of different business environments. So if you're going to do it in Estonia, again, I'm really biased because we're building uh, Unicounts, which is uh, the simplest way to start an Estonian company. Mm. Um, so actually, like I... When I started my first Estonian company, I was a bit clueless. Like I was clicking around uh, on the government website trying to figure everything out. And I phoned up uh, Eva, um, uh, an Estonian entrepreneur who's giving me lots of advice about the best way to do things. And, um, and Eva is uh, the founder of Unicount. So actually, he created this kind of service so that anyone can just very easily figure out how to quickly set up a company. Um, so that's what Unicount is. That's where it came from. And um, yeah, so unicamp.eu, you can check it out. If you've got an Estonian digital ID card, which you can get as an e-resident of Estonia, you don't have to be a resident, a physical resident of Estonia, um, then you can use your digital ID to set up an Estonian company through that service. Absolutely. And, and we're going to get uh, back to this a little bit. But mm. uh, before we go into this, how, how did the connection happen? with you and the e-residency. I know you've been mm. a key figure in the development internationally of this amazing program. Uh, how did, it, how did the, the match happen with you and, and the e-residency? Yeah, I was like, um, uh, so to go all the way back, I'm Estonian, but I don't sound like it. So um, I was born in England, um, but I've got like an Estonian dad and a Latvian mum, and, and I come from 
uh, a family who we have family members that fled from Estonia and Latvia uh, during the Soviet times. Yes. Um, so we back in 1944, we had a big mass exodus of people who fled uh, the Baltic states, unfortunately. And now we're yeah, coming, coming back. We're coming yeah. back. Yeah, you see this trend as yeah. well. There's quite a few of us coming. It's a really good like show of confidence in the future of the country that you know these people. They, these are the grandchildren of people who fled that are now coming back. Right. Um, and I, I came back to, I guess you know I didn't grow up speaking Estonian. I didn't grow up with a strong connection to Estonia. Although I, I came here on my summer holidays, but I didn't you know have much of a connection to Estonia until I was given my digital ID card, my Estonian digital ID card. So. You know, if you're an e-resident, you can apply for a dig- sorry. If you want to get an Estonian digital ID card and you're not a citizen and you don't live in Estonia, then you can get it through e-residency to get one. But for me, as an Estonian citizen uh, living abroad, I got mine automatically issued to me. Um, so when I was born, Estonia wasn't free. Um, but then retrospectively, I was uh, recognized as an Estonian citizen and given my card. And then once I got the card, I thought, ah, you know, like, it'd be fun to do something. At first, I thought this is like a bit of a novelty. Like, um, right. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But then when I realized, like, oh, you can use it to start a company, I tried that out. Um, I ended up coming to Estonia thinking, like, oh, you know, like, let's develop this company. Let's make connections here. And, you know, I, I just found so many opportunities here in Estonia that it kind of snowballed. And um, uh, and it was a content marketing company. We did marketing. And mm-hmm. I started doing it for startups in Estonia. And then I started doing it for the e-residency program, which was uh, young back then. And, yeah, eventually kind of they asked me if I wanted to join the program. And I said, yeah, sure. I, I, I paused my company and, and went and joined the Beautiful. program. Yeah, and it was, it was great to be a part of it um, for a couple of years really enjoyed it really great team like you'd be amazed how small the team is like for a kind of a program that gets so much attention so much around attention the world worldwide, yeah. yes, it yes. started off of kind of uh Kasper Kurius, uh just like working on a spare desk in a back office uh, that they gave him and um but to be honest like the e-residency program is is built on top of the Estonian state so yeah. Estonia has already invested in its digital services for like two decades and then the e-residency program is like, how do we join this up more for non-residents who don't speak Estonian, who don't live here? Um, how do we, you know, translate some of these services for them? Sometimes right. literally, like, translate them into English. Um, but also metaphorically, like, how do we make it more user-friendly for international entrepreneurs? Um, so, like, it's funny because sometimes we get asked questions by journalists who, like, when another country is thinking of creating a new residency program, and there's a lot of them doing it at the moment. At the time, yes. Yeah, the journalists will phone up and say, like, oh, so your e-residency program, like, how much did it cost? <laughs> and uh, we'd say, like, well, you know, this is the budget of the program over the past couple of years, but but that's not the cost of e-residency because the cost of e-residency is, like, what the Estonian state has been developing for two decades in all government services. Like, e-residency is not, like, the e-residency team or the e-residency program. You know, e-residency is, it's the whole state. It's part of how the state functions. Um, E-resident is an official status that our state recognizes, and we just happen to have uh, a team of people who do a really good job kind of, like, helping those people that we recognize. Mm-hmm. Very nice. It, it's um, it's coherent. It's uh, the prolongation of, of 20 years of development. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's the cherry on top of the cake yeah. that helps people in de- develop their businesses worldwide and and access this program that is already in place so mm-hmm. that uh, the state even benefits from that. Um, in recent Recently, I, I read that uh, the resid- residents have grossed over 1.6 billion mm. in, in revenue and that's 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 big yeah uh, it impacts the local economy and so on it also reminds me a story of uh, one of my partners uh with life invest that was living in uh, in london in london uh, as a broker and that came back in estonia because he 10 years ago because he felt that uh, there was an opportunity here to come back home mm. reconnect with his roots and, mm. and benefit from this growing country and yeah, yeah it, it makes me think of of a uh, of a prit. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. Okay, because you, but, yeah, yeah, a lot of people think it's cool to become an e-resident and uh, and sign up and maybe you know they don't start their companies immediately and um, but the the value of the program is people starting companies and so right. it's good and not just any companies but companies that are actually growing. So like when the program was started, the goal was like 
let's see how many e-residents we can get. And the goal was like 10 million by 2025. Yeah. And then they realized that like, uh, actually, no, it's more important to measure companies because then we're measuring how much value people are getting. And then they realized again, like we can refine this even more. We can measure how successful these companies are. Um, so that's the goal at the moment. It's how do we, you know, help existing e-residents to become company owners and to, you know, build successful companies. Estonia only benefits when e-residents benefit. If an e-resident wants to be an e-resident and doesn't use their card, then, you know, we're happy for them if that's what they want. Um, but, you know, if they use their card, that benefits them, it benefits Estonia. Um, we want them to build successful companies. Mm. Very good. So, who, who's the mo the the ideal person for applying to the residency and creating their business, and who is it not for? Mm. You earlier mentioned it's not for everyone. Mm. Uh, who is it for, and who is it not for? Yeah, it's funny because like some the people who are most in the news as being famous e residents tend to be uh, the people who are who are not ideal for e-residency so some of them like Pope Francis yes uh... so Pope uh, Francis has not created a company um, okay. yet and neither has Bill good Gates to know. it's good to like it's a good like diplomatic um, way of kind of like telling people about Estonia in order to get them their digital ID card Barack Obama has one as well Barack Obama um, Angela Merkel yeah um, but and also even like when you looking looking past kind of heads of states and celebrities and stuff um yeah even kind of you know these kind of wealthy entrepreneurs who are like already very well established in business they get a lot of headlines um when they become e-residents but even then kind of it's the people who make up the majority of the e-resident population they're freelancers they're, they're very early stage startups okay. they tend to be one person companies um, they're people who want to get a company started as easily as possible and as low cost as possible with as little hassle as possible. Um, and yeah, and you know, I, it might not sound sexy to the media, um, but I think these people are, you know, we, we value them so much. Like it's better to have like a thousand freelancers who are really getting value from your residency than to have a few kind of famous companies that are featured in the media a lot. Um, we would rather kind of help kind of freelancers and small companies become more successful and hopefully more famous in the future too. But, yeah. So you focus now on the on the quality as opposed to the quantity. Yes. Yeah. And what are those KPIs? Um, so it's about kind of it, it's about how much revenue, then how much um, like how much taxation is paid from that, okay. and you can see kind of what kind of contribution e-residents are making to Estonia. And obviously, they can only make a contribution to Estonia if their companies are growing and um, and actually making a profit and, and paying out a profit. Um, not all Estonian companies do pay their taxes to Estonia. Um, sorry, not all e-resident companies do pay their taxes to Estonia. And that's perfectly fine. Like, if, if another country um, has a fair claim for that company's taxes, you know, if if this is a company that's entirely based in one country and doing business in that country, and it's very clearly kind of got its permanent establishment in that country, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then of course that country should take the taxes. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't matter to Estonia because, you know, we would rather keep, it, it's still great if people can use e-residency, even if they're not, they don't have their permanent establishment here. Totally. Um, actually, you know, the biggest um, contribution from e-residents to Estonia uh, it's not taxation. Uh, it's not the fee for becoming an e-resident. It's the, it's when they do business with other Estonian companies, and right. that's what really lawyer firms, maybe accounting firms. And yeah, yeah. Other, so, other yeah. businesses basically. Yeah, because that's like um, I, the most obvious thing people go for is like an accountant. You start right. a company, you get an accountant. Um, but we we've always wanted it to be about much more than just kind of finding an accountant in Estonia. We don't want to turn Estonia just into a nation of accountants. I love accountants. My dad and my brother are accountants, but um, we're hoping that kind of we can connect e-residents to even more people in Estonia. Like, you know, if you're looking for, you know, maybe a designer, graphic designer or something like that, it'd be nice to be able to find it in Estonia as well. Totally, totally. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and they are to, um, to complement what you've just said, to create a company in Estonia through e-residency is... A fraction of the price of what it normally costs to create a business elsewhere. Mm. Uh, it's up to a thousand euros, mm. all included. 
as opposed to being able to find somewhere else for 10 times the price yeah. for company creation and, and everything. So it's a perfect solution in my taste, in my view, to create a company and, and until it, it gets profitable. Yeah. So it, it, Because even like sometimes people ask like why, if you're in the EU, why would you start a company in Estonia when you're already in an EU country? Um, and actually, even EU countries have very different, um, you know, costs and, and rules when it comes to starting a company. Um, I I don't know what the situation is in. I haven't even asked France. where you're from, but France. France yeah, yeah France, I don't know what the situation. I don't know too much about the specifics in France, but I was talking to someone uh, from Belgium recently, mm-hmm. uh, an E resident, and in Belgium, it's. It, I, it's a few thousand or over a thousand to start the company. But then there's also all kinds of rules. So share capital is really high. You need to invest a lot into your company up front. There's also a rule that says you need to have a um, like office space for your company in Belgium. So even if you want to work from home or you want to work from a cafe or you want to go traveling, you have to pay for, you have to show the lease for the office space for your company. Okay. Um, and it's those kind of rules that like, you know, every EU country has different requirements for their companies, different costs, different share capital investments. There's really massively different um, kind of ease of doing business just within the EU. I know we think of it as a single market. Um, in many ways it is, but in many ways we're kind of, things are very different between different countries still. Totally. So I know that there's a, um a long-term vision with the residency. Mm. Um, I've read a report about a version two. Mm-hmm. In your experience, what can we expect for the near future, let's say for the next three to five years? Yeah, I think one thing you're going to see a lot more of is focus on existing e residents because of the way the goals have kept evolving. It's, you know, we don't just need to get as many people as possible to become e residents. It's okay for that to slow down a bit um, at the expense of, being able to have more time uh, to help existing new residents kind of become more successful, um, help them develop their companies. So that's really important. Um, And then e-residency 2.0, it was an initiative led by the president um, with the e-residency program, bringing together like everyone involved in e-residency in Estonia from both the public and the private sector, bring them together to talk about what are the challenges, what needs to be improved, how can we make e-residency even better? Um, And, Loads of really interesting ideas came out of that. I think some are much more, some are much more easier to achieve in the short term than others. Some are kind of long term goals. Um, one goal that you know, I no longer work for the residency program, so I can speak kind of uh, uh, as myself, or well, I work for Unicount, so kind of from our perspective. And one thing we're really interested in is how we can get rid of the ID card of the offline pickups. Yeah, because so at the moment, sometimes people think of e-residency as an ID card and a digital ID card, but it's not. E-residency is a status. With that status comes a digital ID. And it just so happens that the best technology we've got for that at the moment is the ID card. And, you know, if you lose your ID card, you get another one and it still gives you access to the same ID. You keep the same digital ID for life. And... The ID card has a lot of downsides. Um, it's not as user friendly. Having to plug it into your computer each time, we'd rather people could do things on their phone. Um, you also have to travel to pick it up physically. You know, we can't just post out a digital ID card. Like the way the law works at the moment is, when you get any Estonian digital ID card, including as a e-resident, you have to go and get it from a government official. So for most e-residents around the world, it means going to an embassy right. and getting it on another pickup location. Mm-hmm. Um, great if you live in Paris or London. Yeah. Not, not so great if you live in the middle of South America and your nearest embassy is Washington, D.C. True. Um, so we need to improve, especially during the pandemic, where exactly. it's, it's even more difficult to travel. We need to improve the way... Um, so actually, so for Estonians, we don't actually use cards so much anymore. We use mobile ID or smart ID. We have the digital ID on our phones. Right. Um, and at the moment, there's just, it's not about technology. It's about the legal processes of making sure it's secure that, you know, if we're going to be handing out digital IDs to people around the world, we want to make sure they are who they say they are, that they right. go through the right checks and, and they get it in like a really thorough, secure way. 
So there's challenges to overcome there, but the goal, the long-term goal from both the program and even more from companies like Unicount is that we want to get rid of the ID cards. We would rather think about ways that new technology, new rules could allow e-residents um, to get their card, to get their digital IDs online. So maybe they don't need the card; they can get it onto their phone. We just need to make sure, like, how do we verify those people online? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of challenges to overcome, but it's possible yeah. to overcome, and it will be overcome eventually. You, as a, as a lead uh, developing person for Unicount, uh, I know that you and a few private companies have already engaged discussions with yeah. the government about this. Any insights, any things you could share with us, or is it too early to say? It is too early to say. It takes time. Um, right. Yeah. But, you know, the program, the government, they absolutely, they're absolutely on our side. They want the same thing. Like always, um, it feels yeah. like in Estonia. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, one thing I'll take issue with, uh, you talk okay. about me being... Um, working in development um I, i must clarify i have no technical skills whatsoever um and that's partly kind of what attracts me to to working with on e-residency helping you residents and stuff is because like like the benefits of digitization and technology should be for everyone whether you have technical skills or not um mm. it's so e-residency and everything else estonia is doing it's not just for kind of very tech savvy people maybe living in talent kind of um young people who know how to use technology well it's also for your grandma living in kind of rural estonia and they they need to benefit from digitization just as much as anyone else um and actually the the take up rate in estonia of like using digital id cards is really good um estonia's done a really good job of making sure that the benefits of digitization have spread out in terms of making sure that people know how to use their digital id cards like on a daily basis and get those benefits from them and same for me like i Uh, I still struggle to use my TV remote control, but I can use my digital ID because it has to be user friendly. Um, yeah. Nice, nice. And as you as you said, uh, Estonia is being very supportive of private companies. Mm -hmm. How did Unicount benefit from the help of the Estonian government so far? If, if that's the case. Yeah. So the Estonian government wants to you know create the platforms that the private sector can then build on top of. Um, so when you think the digital ID card, it really just does two things. It authenticates your identity. This person is who they say they are online. And it enables digital signing. It makes you to make a legally binding agreement online. And with those two things, like that's all the Estonian government is offering um, through the digital ID cards. But on top of that, the private sector can do so much stuff. Like we can build new services around it. We can integrate it into existing services. We can rethink things. Um, so for Unicount, kind of we we took the government's APIs for company formation. So the Estonian government has a company formation portal. Anyone who wants to start a company is very welcome to go to the government website and use that. Uh, what Unicount did is we took the APIs and plugged it into our own service, our own platform, so that we can then redesign the process of starting a company and we can just make it a lot more easier. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I totally understand. It takes the government time sometimes to kind of develop its own services yeah. and there's different priorities. And and for them, it's like, you know, well, you know, instead of continuously investing in improving services like this, uh, we can also kind of open it up to the private sector, give them our APIs so that then they can create their own services And let's see what they do with it, what, how they reimagine it. And, uh, you know, it's the free market. Kind of, We'll see, like, whoever can create the best service on top of that. Um, and that's why, kind of, with Unicount, it was really important to, like, figure out how do we take the APIs so that we're taking the process of starting a Estonian company from the state and we're making it as easy as possible so that, like, uh, within three minutes you can... You can go through the entire process, but then you can also get everything else you need, which the government can't offer. Um, you know, it, it's not just about ease. Like the government understands that there's only so much it can do. Um, there's some things that it's not appropriate for the government to do. Um, so, so when you're starting a company, you need an accountant, you need banking, uh, you need a whole load of private sector services. So the idea is that we plug those in at Unicount so people can easily choose them. Um, you know, the government can't just you know, offer all these services itself. Um, uh, and it, it's one of the debates, like, since when e-residency started, is like, is e-residency is e-residency a startup or is it like a platform that people can build on top of? And initially, a lot of people talk about e-residency as it's a startup, it's a government startup. 
it's a government startup in terms of like it's a startup way of thinking like the government needs to be lean and Mm -hmm. think creatively but it's not a startup in terms of the government is not trying to offer everything the government is not trying to build its own bank its own accounting services uh it just you know i I said there's a tiny team working on e-residency you you'd have to build a massive team to try and develop those services and still then you probably couldn't do a better job than most private sector companies so instead of competing it's just like let the private sector build on top give space and freedom for the private sector to do their own thing and offer their own value um banking is another example where um a few years ago banking was still quite restricted Mm -hmm. there was a law saying that when you register share cap share capital for your estonian company you need to use an estonian bank and the law was changed to say you need to use a bank or fintech company in the european economic area Mm -hmm. so it just opened up and it meant that kind of more companies could offer services to e-residents and that's always been the kind of foundation for guiding philosophy for how the government's been developing services like e-residency it's like give the private sector the space to improve things and offer their own services to e-residents nice nice so you 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 partially answered to the la- la- next question i was going to ask you is the reason why you joined unicount hmm. but uh, obviously it's to help uh, entrepreneurs yeah develop and create their businesses um are there any other problems that uh, people may face when creating a company via the e-residency by their than themselves yeah so i mentioned e-residency isn't for everyone and um so some people have more challenges than others and you know that's not something we're trying to hide because actually we would rather like have them have less hassle and us have less hassle than like just figuring out is this good for you or not like at the earliest possible moment um in terms of challenges so like so when it comes to banking, uh, like every e-resident company can get some form of banking um, for their Estonian company. Right. The It just depends on how much choice is available, depends on kind of the nature of what kind of they're doing with e-residency. Um, so on one extreme, for example, is crypto. Um, it's actually quite difficult to get banking for a crypto company. And actually the rules for e-residents uh, engaging in crypto have become even more restrictive um, over the past year or two. So those don't benefit so much. Um, another thing is like, if you're a, if you have a substantial offline presence mm-hmm. that it's hard for the banks to have oversight of, then it's going to be very difficult for you to get banking. It's funny because like for digital digital nomads, um, and people who do all their business kind of online, um, in some ways, they're kind of, they're most discriminated against because for various reasons of like, they're always traveling, not having a fixed address and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to banking, it's the complete opposite because banks have to do their due diligence to see like, is this a legitimate um, business or, you know, is this a front for some kind of money laundering or something? And if you're an online company, um if you're genuinely doing all your business online you're marketing yourself online you're engaging with clients online you're you've got a portfolio of work online it's very easy for the banks to see like oh this is a real company this is a real person it's very easy for them to do due diligence um and that's why kind of online businesses benefit much more than offline businesses where Mm -hmm. someone says like oh you know we um we manufacture something we buy and sell cars or something and maybe the yeah. bank just can't see what is going on mm-hmm. um and they're a lot more risk averse to that um so it does tend to be yes yeah, startups online startups freelancers you can have a good time in estonia for sure um, for sure um so you are happy having joined unicount obviously mm-hmm. uh, you're doing great job over there uh, what are the latest projects you've been working on yeah, so I, I've been with Unicount um, well, just less than a year, actually. So I left the e-residency program because like, I loved it so much. But I think it's healthy to have people come from the private sector to yeah. government and then back to the private sector again. A lot of people working for the Estonian government, including the e-residency program, have followed that path. Um, our two previous managing directors have both gone back to the private sector now. Um, and encourage other people to like follow the same path like go work for government for a few years see things from a government perspective and then it will be so much more valuable when you go back to the private sector um, so I'm really happy to I, I love working at e-residency but I'm happy to be back in the private sector as well um, Unicount's super interesting because yeah we can 
obviously working in government there's a lot of rules yeah and uh, which are important um, yes. you know you because there's a reason why things are you know more difficult in government sometimes like things have to be done properly and securely and totally. by the book and mm -hmm. you're very accountable and stuff so one big priority for us is to improve the integration of private services like accounting like banking so we've been working very closely with TransferWise for banking mm -hmm. with palace and partners who's our recommended accounting provider and we're improving the ways we integrate them so for example if you go to the unicam website mm -hmm. and you open the chat function um, you can now chat directly to an accountant uh, from Palace and Partners um, to ask kind of accounting questions about how to set up your company. Um, they're a really great company. I've been using them myself for a couple of years um, for my business. Um, but it's funny because like for e-residents, sometimes they don't use the same services as Estonians. Um, it's a bit like if you're a tourist, you don't always go to the same restaurants yes. as locals. Um, and you know, you don't always want to, um, just eat at a place that's just for tourists. You want to find out where do the locals eat. And it's the same like with an accountant, you know, sometimes e-residents, they find particular services that are designed just for e-residents. Um, you know, I, I don't want to criticize them. I, th I think these companies do a great job. However, like it's cool to be able to introduce e-residents to uh, companies that Estonians use as well when they're building their companies. Mm. Um, and it means there has to be a bit of work on the other side as well. Um, like Palace and Partners, like they've recently invested in more English speaking accountants and how can they have a better understanding of the kind of accounting issues and challenges facing non resident, e resident entrepreneurs in right. Estonia. Right. So that's all coming together at the moment. So exactly. it means that there's more choice for e residents. Nice. So one one out of six companies were created last year by residents. Mm. Uh, 60,000 people, 150 countries. That's uh, definitely needed. Uh, how does the company creation uh, service that uh, Unicount offers um, really helps smoothen the company creation process? Yeah. So yeah, when I first started my company, like I really couldn't get my head around it. Yeah. Like, there was lots of things I didn't understand, and I had to keep phoning Eva Same. and asking Same. him. Yeah, being French yeah. is <laughs> an experience. Let's say. Yeah, it's um, there are things that are confusing. Um, so there's different aspects of it. There's like the the portal is confusing. The way you click through it, the way you kind of the processes you have to take. Like you have to pay, you have to wire the money over that you can't kind of pay by credit card. And um, but then there's also aspects of the actual company which are very confusing, like the articles of association and field of activity. And um, so the idea is that actually you can create a very simplified version of that process, so that in three minutes you can just go through all of it and have the ideal. Um, the ideal option for each one, like actually, because most people they don't need to, um, they don't need to write their own articles of association. Like there's a very standard articles of association which we offer on Unicamp, which is good for 99% of e-residents starting their companies. So um, then, yes, yeah, so it's about making the process much much easier, and yeah, and then also making sure that e-residents can choose the other services they need to complete the process, like the banking and accounting and and you know, we like, I'll be honest, like Unicount doesn't make any money from the company formation process, even though we do charge a bit more than the state portal. But the slightly extra um, fee just covers the slightly extra cost of using the API. We get charged for that. Mm -hmm. And we have payment processes to make it easier for people to pay directly by credit card and just complete the process. Um, so, yeah, so that like is done at cost. So, so we don't mind that like if e-residents wanted to like go to the state portal instead to start their company, it would be a bit cheaper. Um, but we would be it's, perfectly well, happy. It's 190 yeah. versus 200 and... 225. And yeah, 25. Account, yeah. So we've got to justify the fact that like actually, you know, we can save a lot of your time and hassle by... Just and and doing the, the things account. right as well. Yeah. No mistakes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the idea is like, you know, people want to use the, the state portal, they can... But I think a lot of people like using the um, Unicamp portal just because it saves a lot of time and hassle and get it right the first time. Um, and you've got the chat function to help guide you through it as well. And you know, it's not just e-residents that use it. It's uh, like Estonians as well. Um, mm. And that's really important because, again, like we that's the ultimate aim to make sure that, you know, Estonia belongs to citizens, residents, and e-residents. They're all part of this digital nation. They all have a digital ID card. And 
a sign of success is that you can build a service that all three uh, use. Um, so yeah, Unicount works in Estonian, English, and Russian, and it's really important that you know um, all three groups, citizens, residents, EU residents, get just as much value from it. And it's the same thing I mentioned about kind of, yeah, we don't want to be the kind of tourist restaurant um, that charges a lot and doesn't offer very nice, authentic food that tourists immediately find. We want to be the kind of place that locals go um, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I understand. And I feel like um, you're driven with a good mission, uh, with a clear vision, is to um, to definitely get people mm. um, with all the tools that they need in order to sex- successfully create their companies and make yeah. no mistakes in, in the fastest way, easiest way, smoothest way possible. And, uh, and I'm very glad that we have this discussion today. Mm. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to mention? Uh, no, apart from thank you. Like, thank you for kind of, yeah, what you're doing. Like, coming to Estonia is really great. And, like, the contribution you make when you do business, like, you know, that's that's what keeps the e-residency program going. You know, we've got to make sure that, like, so Estonia benefits from e-residency. It benefits from people like you and the contribution you make to Estonia. But, you know, People like you only make that contribution because you get value from it in return. You get more value from it in return. And that's why we've got to keep on developing e-residency. We've got to keep improving our private sector services around it. Um, we want to keep meeting more people like you. And yeah. Super. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do it. I'm, I'm very glad that we have this uh, collaboration going, Adam. I'm very Thanks glad. for uh, your time today. No, thank you. And the sauna is hot. And if, uh... hot. <laughs> I've got your towel here. It is, it is. Let's do it. (laughs) Cool. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.